our scripture. I don't think you need this, but uh, on the front of our bulletin, let's look, recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our day.
a defying God as holy, holy, holy. Let's go to the first point. Thank you. You guys did a good job on that. Number one point. The Lord's Prayer is a petition for a revelation of God. While the first petition is voiced as a specific urgent appeal, it has beneath a confession. The only reason that would be moved to pray for God's name to be hallowed would be because a lot of people have currently not praised the holy name of Jesus. Humankind is guilty of not regarding God as holy and treating his name as treating his name as an ordinary thing. And it can't be treated as an ordinary thing. God is above all. He is holy. He is the one that we worship. So to take his name lightly is a grave, grave sin. Humankind is guilty of not regarding God as holy. And as we have said, a lot of people just uh, treat God as an ordinary thing. And we must confess there are times when we show little regard for the name of God. Larry Carlin, who was, uh, I love him, he was in our church there at Minerva, and uh, he reserved the word awesome to only God. He, and we sometimes we just use that word as we have awesome weather, or we have an awesome car, or he is an awesome athlete. But he only used the word awesome to address God. He really believed in that song, how awesome is our God. It is primary through this petition that God will make himself known, that God will confront with the truth about himself. This is a petition that God will reveal to himself as he revealed himself to Moses in the burning bush and also to Isaiah at the temple. The conviction behind this petition is only such a knowledge that uh, can meet the deepest needs of humanity. And so that's why we are so carefully to address his hallowed name. Because he's the only one that can help us need, meet our deepest needs. This first petition is not that the people may have strength to do what is right, but rather that we might know God. The conviction is that if people can come to know God, all the other needs will be taken care of. Human Time's deepest problem is their ignorance of God. God's desire is to make himself known on a very personal basis to each one of us. For without God, we live in ignorance. To have knowledge without God, I always say it leaves you nothing but a clever devil. And how true that is. Life is worthless and we are stupid if we do not acknowledge him as Lord of all, Lord of all in our life. We see the priority of the prayers of Paul for himself and for others. Paul was moved to pray that I might know him and also the power of his resurrection, which we talked about in our Sunday school class. If you don't believe in the resurrection, you're... Faith is futile. You, you can't get anything going unless you believe in the power of the resurrection. Paul longed for a deeper and a further knowledge of God in his life. And if anybody had a deep knowledge and a love for God, it was Paul. But he wanted to go deeper and deeper into the love of God. He prayed for other Christians that they might be filled with the fullness of God as well. And this should be our priority to not only know God, but to have others know God as we know God. I love this little illustration about how God loves us, related to a teacher. In a whisper test, Mary Ann Bird writes, I grew up nothing, I, I grew up nothing uh, knowing that I was different and, and hated it. I was born with a cleft palate, and when I started school, my classmates made it clear to me how I looked to them. They kind of made fun of my mishappen lip. They made fun of my crooked nose. They made fun of my lopsided teeth. And they made fun of my garbled speech. When 
schoolmates asked what happened, I would tell them I fell on a piece of glass. Somehow that seemed a whole lot more acceptable to have suffered an, an accident than to have been born different. I was convinced that no one outside my family really loved me. There, however, was a teacher in second grade whom I, we all adored. Her name was Mrs. Leonard. Mrs. Leonard was short, she was round, she was happy, and she was just a sparkling lady. Annually, we had a hearing test. Mrs. Leonard gave that test to everyone in the class, and finally it was my turn. I knew from the past years that as I stood against the door and covered one ear, the teacher at the desk would whisper something <coughs> in my ear. We would have to repeat it back, such as, the sky is blue, or, do you have new shoes? I waited for those words that God must have put in her mouth. Those seven words changed my life. Mrs. Leonard said in her whisper, I wish you were my little girl. God says to everyone, deformed by sin, I wish you were my son. I wish you were my daughter. That's the kind of intimacy that we have in the Lord's Prayer when we say, hallowed be thy name. Also, next point, the Lord's Prayer is a petition for a recognition of God. This petition goes deeper than the people might have known as God is holy. It goes much deeper. In other words, God reveals himself to Moses. He revealed himself to Isaiah. He revealed himself to Peter. And not only did he reveal them of what he is all about, he actually told them what they must do to please the Lord their God. When they knew God as holy, they responded to him accordingly. When they knew God as holy, they replaced him, or excuse me, responded to him in a very dynamic way. A mission petition is what the Lord's Prayer is all about. As we look upon the world and its sin and ignorance, no prayer is more appropriate than a petition that God may be known and be acknowledged by us as sinful humans. It should be the passion of every Christian heart to see God reverenced by the nation of, of the world. And if any nation should honor the Lord their God, it should be the United States of America. And how sad we see that the United States of America is not hallowing the name of God. With all the United States churches and Bibles and Christian radio and television, there isn't any excuse why we shouldn't be drawn to near to the heart of God. But it's not happening. And how sad that is. And that even more so, we should be praying, hallowed be thy name as a nation, our nation, the United States of America. We also must pray that, that we have that hallowed life that he would be so pleased for us to have. We will be powerless unless we cherish that holy, hallowed name. And what does that involve? Our lips should praise the name of God with a sense of awe and reverence. If we really know who God is, our speech and our actions should reflect it. The Old Testament people of God have such a respect of God and awareness of His holiness, they would not even write His name down, or they were even reluctant to speak it. They often spoke of Him as simply as the name. That's how much respect they had for their Lord in the Old and to the New Testament as well. This stands in sharp contrast to the irreverent familiarity that has crept into our lives and into our society. As you're watching TV so many times nowadays, you'll hear God's name in vain. And it just makes you angry that on television, they take the name of God in vain. And we hear it more and more and more all the time. What a blasphemous thing to take the Lord's name in vain. 
I don't know about you, but I've never had the courage to take the Lord's name in vain. I love my Lord too much, and I realize that by taking the Lord's name in vain, I am slapping the hand who feeds me and takes care of me on a daily basis. As you know, I go walking every morning, my wife and I do, most of the time she goes, and uh, we bought by this one dog, and we have our dog treats. Now, I've come to the place, this dog has so much confidence in me that he'll take the biscuit from my hand. Never once have he bit my hand. He knows the hand that feeds him. <laughs> so it is with the Lord. How stupid and how dumb and how irreverent it is to take the Lord's name in vain. I think maybe I've told you this illustration about it. I drove school bus for 13 and a half years. And I would correct the children if they even said, like, God, it's hot outside, or God, I haven't got my schoolwork done. I would correct them. I said, no, you don't say that unless you're addressing the Lord God in a very reverent way. Well, I finally just kind of gave up because it was such a part of their English language to say God is in an irreverent manner. And how sad that is. And, he, and, we, and I'm sure that you have taught your children, when you speak about God, always speak in a very reverent manner. He is our Lord. He is our God. And we should respect the name of the Lord, our God. Yes, we have to be careful in our speech because we are judged by our speech. The mouth can speak only what has been conceived in the heart. Let me ask you a question. What are your thoughts toward God? What are your secret thoughts that uh, would not make the name of God pleasing in a hallowed way? Do you harbor resentment toward God? Do you resent his claims on your life? Do you resist the purposes that God has before you? Do you insist on having your way rather than God's? And if you do that, you're not hallowing the name of the Lord your God. To hallow the Lord's name means that you reverence his name. You acknowledge him as your Lord and your Savior. And you adore the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. To hallow God means to be a submission to him. It's also to adore him and also to praise the Lord your God. And that's why you're here this morning. You have hallowed the name of the Lord by being here, by worshiping in spirit and in truth. That's hallowing the name of the Lord. Furthermore, the petition, hallowed be thy name, includes your personal conduct. The conduct of our daily lives can be a blasphemy as, uh, of the name just as our speech can. Paul leveled such a charge against the Israelites of his day. That, uh, that your heart is far from me. And uh, he also condemned them for not acting the way that Christians should act. For me to live as Christ and to die is gain. He was constantly harping on the people the way they should live. And as we look at his letters, we have a perfect example on how we should live in every aspect of our life. If you love him, you will obey him and his word. What is your conduct saying about your God and whom you know personally? Is it speaking to them of a God of love and a God of kindness, a God of truth and a God of honesty? Or is it suggesting that God means very little to you? Does your conduct say to the world, God is worth knowing? Recently, a third and fourth grade class at Wheaton, Illinois, uh, in their Christian grammar school were asked to complete the following sentence. By faith, I know God is. Now, I know you couldn't get away with that in many public schools today, but uh, it was a Christian grammar school. And this is what the following people said about who God is. The first one, whose name was Amanda, she said, God is forgiving. God forgave in the Bible and he forgave me because I went out on the road on a bike without my parents and their permission. <laughs> Another student said God is very providing for me. Because he dropped manna on for Moses, 
And also, he gave my dad a job in which he so desperately needed. Another person said that God is caring. He made the blind man see in the New Testament. And uh, also, he made me catch a very fast line drive that could not hurt me. He probably sent an angel. Another person said that God is merciful. My, he is merciful because my brother has been nice to me all year. Jeremy, I like that one. Faithful, another person said that God was. Because the school bill came and my mom didn't know how we are going to pay for it. Two minutes later, my dad called and said he just got a bonus check. And as you know, those uh, Christian school bills can be pretty high to a family. The last person, uh, that uh, a little um, girl by the name of Hannah. I know that God is sweet because he gave me a dog. <laughs> and he also told me when I was doing bad, and uh, I need someone like that to tell me when I'm doing bad. Yes, hallowed be the name of the Lord our God. God thought it was very important in the, or Jesus did, as he gave the model prayer that we should hallow his name. Jesus loves each one of us. He wants us to respect and hallow him in our words, in our life, in our ways, so that we may show others. We can't do a very good job in the Great Commission unless we hallow the name of the Lord thy God.